Good morning. Give me just a second. Let me share this in a couple of groups. So every once in a while, um, I just feel like God will put something on my heart during devotions that I need to come on and share. And what happens is sometimes I will want to wait. Hi, if you're hopping on, say hi. I know it's really early in the morning. So most people I think are just going to watch this on the replay. But what will happen is a lot of times I'll want to wait until I have showered and look better. And um, the problem is by the time I wait, like I'm not passionate about whatever he put on my heart to speak on. So then I just end up not doing it. So I have decided one thing in this 90 day journey that I'm doing with 100% showing up, anytime God lays something on my heart to share, I'm sharing it regardless if I feel like I am ready to go live and share it, if that makes sense. So I went to the gym this morning, got home, I was doing my devotions and journaling um, and something, I was listening to a sermon and something just kind of stuck out to me. So actually two things stuck out to me. So the first one is, this was the, the preacher talking, but he was saying how he went and he got a liposuction consult consultation. And this kind of made me laugh out loud. So the doctor was asking him why he wanted liposuction. And the pastor's like, hey man, like I want to be skinny, but I still want to go to Taco Bell. And the doctor goes, well, don't come to me asking me to fix something that you are unwilling to fix. And then he went on to say, how many times do we do that with God? How many times do we bring a problem to God that we absolutely could fix? Now, I'm not saying we don't, you know, pray that God blesses our efforts in fixing the problem, but we can absolutely fix it, but we're unwilling to put in any of the work. We want God to give us liposuction so we can still go through the Taco Bell drive through every single day. Now, I can tell you I've been there. So... Um, just a couple different examples that I wrote down when he was preaching is your weight. How many times have I asked God to help me lose weight, but I refuse to work out, I refuse to track my macros, and I kind of just eat whatever I want to, but I'm asking God to help me lose weight. It's kind of like the whole, dear God, thank you for this day, bless this food to my body, amen. When we're asking God to bless food to our body, that is not a blessing to us. I'm not saying you don't ever eat comfort food. I just think it's ironic that we pray that prayer in, during some meals. <laughs> um, our money. How many times do we ask God for money, but we refuse to set up a budget? We have no idea where our money's going. It's just kind of going. We refuse to work for it. How many times, one, how many times have you seen me on your page? You're obviously watching this. And I talk about how I make money online, yet you don't want to do it because you're too good for it, you're too skeptical, you're too whatever, fill in the blank, right? Um, how many times do you ask God for more money, but you turn down every opportunity that comes your way? Again, I've been there. How many times do we ask God to bless our marriage, and we bring a problem in our marriage to him, but we refuse to read the books, we refuse to schedule the date nights, and we refuse to go to the counselors that God put in our path to help us? Hey, Shannon. And then the last one I wrote down is our kids' behavior. How many times do we ask God to help our kids be good, <laughs> help our kids obey, help our kids not to, you know, give us gray hair by the time we're 30? But again, we refuse to read the books. Guys, how many free resources do we have between YouTube and podcasts and books? Like, there's no excuse not to know how to train your kids. And then the second part of that is how many times do we refuse to discipline ourselves? 99% of the time... I can look at a child who is struggling with some character flaw and I look at the parents and they have the same character flaw. I can look at a child who's lazy and as soon as it gets hard, they quit and the mom does the exact same thing because I've seen her do it over and over again. I can look at a daughter who has an awful attitude, yet the mom has the same attitude toward her husband that the daughter is seeing. We're the example to our child. Um, and that's not every single time, but I'm saying majority of the time that is the case. And I know mine was the attitude. Not toward my husband necessarily, but just in general. I'm very snarky, very sarcastic. That's part of my personality. But it can definitely be taken over the line to being rude. And my daughter picked that up by around the time she was four. 
I was looking at a little freaking mini me in the mirror and I had to remind myself like, ooh, I can't get mad at her when I'm doing the same thing. I need to fix this and we need to work on this together. So that was the first thought. And then the second thought that came from that is our mind needs guidance. What are you dwelling on? Um, how many times do we bring God a problem, but we don't bring God into the process? We don't come to him until we have a problem when a lot of our problems, realistically, we could fix or even prevent by doing a little bit of maintenance work, a little bit of mind work before the problem actually becomes a problem. Um, again, what are you struggling with? Are you struggling with managing your money? Are you struggling with your marriage? Are you struggling with your attitude? Um, what are you feeding into your mind regarding that subject? Free podcasts, Audible, go to your library. There's tons of books. There's YouTube. There's so many free resources. And it's been proven what you dwell on is what you get. Now, I don't think there's any like voodoo behind that. I'm not a fan of, I hesitate to say I'm not a fan of manifesting because I am, but I'm not. I'm not a fan of manifesting when it comes to like, oh, it's magic. Just think about it and you'll be rich. Because there's other steps that I feel like people don't talk about because the logical steps that go into that. But what happens is what you dwell on, that is what more likely you're willing to work for and you're kind of, it's in the front of your mind, right? So you're motivated to work for that. And then action is what breed results. So I am a fan of manifesting in the respect that you're keeping it in the forefront of your mind and that's going to push you to work for it. I'm not a fan of manifesting and it being like magic, I guess. Um, but all that to say, so just I'll leave you with an example and then I'll let you go. Um, for example, though, if I spend all day listening to food podcasts on what foods cure can not cure, I guess that's not the right word, what foods can prevent cancer, help prevent cancer, help your body not get cancer, whatever the like correct terminology is. Um, Versus if I spend all day laying on the couch watching Food Network and the Baking Wars, what am I more likely going to fuel my body with? If I'm listening to a food podcast about all the different good, clean foods that my body needs to ward off different illnesses, I'm probably going to make healthy choices that day. Versus if I'm watching all the amazing cakes and treats and candies probably I'm going to fuel my body with crap because that's what's in the forefront of my mind. Same with money. Guys, if you're on the team and you're constantly, constantly listening to negativity, now I'm not a fan of putting yourself in an echo chamber. I'm not a fan of, oh, well, they don't support me. I'm just going to cut them out of my life. But if that's what's in the forefront in front of your mind, that's what you're going to start believing. The industry has been proven, guys. I've been doing it for five years. My friends have been doing it for 10, 15, 20 years. Um, it's a proven industry. Now you're the one who has to prove yourself. Are you willing to work for it? That's all it takes. That's all it comes down to is your own work ethic and your character. Um, but the same thing goes. If you are feeding crap into your mind, you're going to quit before you ever become successful with this. On the flip side, if you're constantly listening to network marketing success stories, and tips and tricks on how to become better. Because again, just listening to success stories isn't going to do anything magical for you. You got to know how to do it. We have tons of free trainings. I am like the queen of teaching people how to do curiosity marketing and marketing in general versus sales. That's why if you look at my page, I don't, you don't see any sales. Yet we bring in dozens and dozens and dozens of new customers every single week. So sink that in for a minute. Um, anyways, but just whatever you keep in the forefront of your mind, because your mind does need guidance, that's what you're going to dwell on. And that's what you're going to get. Those are the results you're going to get because it's in the forefront of your mind and it's going to make you work for it. So I'm going to let you go. But I just felt, again, God laid it on my heart to share. So I wanted to share and I will talk to you guys later.